today I'm going to show you how you can easily add a gradient background fill to your forms to make them more visually interesting for your end users and different methods I'm going to show you two of them involve code and the other two are completely no code methods accompanying article for this is at arledogs.co.uk gradient fill and it includes the example app and all the code for free the two code methods are very similar. The first of them uses a series of 256 narrow labels side by side across the form to give you a gradient effect as the colors change from one label to the next. The second method is similar but uses a series of rectangles again with the same idea gradually changing the colors as you move from one rectangle to the next one across the form. The two no code methods the first of those involves creating a background image with the gradient already prepared in another application and then importing that into Access. And finally, using the built-in gradient property available with Access command buttons. Let's have a look at the example app. There are five forms available here to illustrate the different ideas. And the first of these is the label code method. If we go to design view, you can see that I've got a series of narrow labels, 256 in all, moving across the form. We've got a mid blue color here and a pale blue color there. The labels are added using code and then the colors are added to those labels using whatever definition you decide for the color variation that you want all done with this apply gradient to form code and it's in mod gradient labels let's have a look at the code now this was the first method I ever found almost 20 years ago now at bytes.com by somebody called Lyle Fairfield and it's a relatively sim simple method. I've, I've altered it slightly for my own purposes to save a background copy of the form if we need to so I can re-import that. Well, you will see shortly that every time we change the colors we have to recreate those labels there. Now the basically 256 of those it divides the width into 256 sets the background colors here and we then apply that with this one line of code. Now you could do it at form load I don't recommend doing that. If I go to design view again and show you that code running bring that down then you can see how it works. So it's now going to add labels moving across the form and you can see that it takes a few seconds to do. I'm using the same colors as before and then we've got those labels added on there and next time we open the form we're reusing the same ones we don't have to create them again but let's say I decide to do that a second time and run it again Obviously, I could have changed the colors if I wanted to. Again, it's worked perfectly well. I'm going to go for broke and I'm going to change it a third time. And watch what happens now. After we've done it three times, the original one plus another two, we hit the lifetime limit for controls on a form, which officially is 754. In practice, it's about 1,000. And once we've reached that, we cannot run that code again on this form. We've either got to replace the form or accept the colors that we've got here. It will still open perfectly well, but you can't actually do any changes to it. The other problem with this is if you change the size of your form that the labels you've got on here don't expand to fill the space. So basically I would recommend that you use this method only on a form which is not sizable. And better still, let's use a different method. The second code method again uses a series of items here, rectangles rather than labels, but it's the same idea. This one uses 200 of these, and this code was originally by Peter DeBates, and it has several advantages over the other one. It's still on the same disadvantage that if you change the size of your form, it doesn't fill the space available. But you only create those rectangles once, again using code, for each form you then add the colors and you can change those colors separately without recreating new rectangles so I can for example swap the colors over 
swap them back again I can change that to a different color let's say red and you now see one of the problems with having a gradient fill is that it can be very difficult to actually see the text that's over it so let's get rid of that and let's change it to something slightly paler and that's a little bit better I think. Each of the sets of code are in the mod color gradient. You don't really need to understand how the code works because you don't need to actually edit it in any way at all. But Peter DeBates of Peter Software wrote this some time ago. It's more complicated the code, uh, some various APIs used and you create the rectangles just by running BCG create rectangles. I won't go through the details there. It determines the width, divides it by 200 and creates a rectangle appropriately. And you can then add the color by running BCG set colors. And again, it's fairly complicated code, just works out what change needs to be made from one rectangle to the next. If you want to, you can change this so you have instead of a horizontal gradient using vertical rectangles you can have horizontal rectangles and get a vertical gradient the idea is much the same although the codes complicated actually using it is easy for the next method we can use background images to create either a horizontal or a vertical gradient this one here then we've got a horizontal gradient from a dark green to a pale green not much variation in the choice here by a maid and we create our image in a different program such as Word or PowerPoint anything will do where you can create an image let's have a look at the images I've done this one here then is a very narrow one pixel high graduated image dark green to pale green you probably can't see it clearly on there The other one for the next form is dark blue to pale blue and it's in the opposite direction. Now you create the image in e.g. Word, you then reduce it so it's only one pixel high which reduces the file size and then you put that image in as an embedded or shared image and if I do a shared image it's part of the image gallery. Having got your very small image you then tile it so it's repeated endlessly across the form here. So you've got the same image used multiple times. I've aligned it centrally and most important of all I've stretched it horizontally so that if we expand the form unlike the previous two examples it does fill the space available. So that's one advantage of this method. The disadvantage of course is you can't change the colors without changing the image vertical gradient works in exactly the same way I've used the vertical image dark blue at the top pale blue here and here I've added a label over the footer section to add a bit of contrast you again can see the issue with the colors and that is that if the dark blue text here uh, if I use the same color text for the whole of the form I wouldn't be able to read it I've used rich text and I've changed the color as you can see here at the second example there I've changed the color as I move down on the form again we can change the size of it and it still actually works of course you can now see the footer label I've got here because that doesn't expand with it no code method very simple but as I say you need to choose your colors and stick with them you can... second method using command buttons this form I've got three different command buttons one on the header going from dark red to pale red large one over the detail section sort of pale pink to a darker pink and again another light red to dark red label over the footer section so three different labels with this you're using the gradient fill property of buttons and it's also important that you don't let the buttons get focused you don't want them to be clicked by accident so you disable them and also make sure they haven't got a caption so if we go to design view here command button one enable equals no similarly here move that out of the way here command button two again enabled equals no and on the last part here form here enabled no and if we now go to the format and go to shape fill gradient you can see the effect I've chosen here pale ish red to dark red there for the detail section same idea format shape fill gradient and I've chosen it to be a dark spot in the center let's change that so it's actually at the top left corner instead 
and now we have a form as you can see with the gradients on each of these but again because they are buttons they are a fixed size so if I do change the size of the form you can now clearly see the edges there and you can actually see it because it's buttons it's got very slight rounding in the corners as well so again this method although very simple is probably best used with a fixed size form that's basically it for today thanks for watching as always if you found it useful please add a like and leave a comment suggest topics for future videos in this series and do subscribe you'll then be notified whenever I upload new videos. Thanks again, I'll see you soon.